much there's a lot of changes and I think some of them will impact the war meta pretty significantly. Mostly the heart rune. I think the heart rune's like really, really underrated. Just cause it's like a it's a grav and uh and okay damage and the stagger. So it's just like naturally like very, very good for healers since it's like hard to, to actually mess up. What a transition. Oh man. <laughs> uh alright. I wanna start powering through this. Okay, heavy SNS IG next patch. Do I think it's going to be better than VG? Probably. And SNS got a couple of like very, very, very big buffs, but also a few like really big nerfs in terms of like actual uh, bugs. So you're going to be able. You're not going to have as much stam, and you're you're going to have a bigger radius. The bigger radius is like a really, really big deal. I think that inherently just makes SNS like a super, super carry role with the defensive formation change. But because you're not going to be able to generate as much stam, people are going to have to get more creative. I think IG will be good, but I don't think it will be as good as it is on the current patch because you're going to be running out of stam with it. And other weapons might not run out of stam, so I'd probably say it's like somewhere around A, but it's not like perfect. VG, I think, gets even worse because you're not going to be able to gen stam. Uh, the empower and the slow on top of tether. It's not really that scary. It, it like it doesn't really do enough to be honest. That's probably in the lines of like a B tier build. Like it's okay. A uh, great sword doesn't really solve the stam issue that SNS has completely, but kind of solves it. Problem with great swords, you can't really use it to live. Uh, I think it's like about where IG is, where it's like decent, but it's not like a hard hard carry role. Warhammer. I don't think it's as good as VG even. I think it's somewhere like down here. I just put it on here because I've seen some people run it. Spear I think is underrated though uh, because the cyclone change. Skewer's okay mobility, but it's mostly for, for cyclone. That spear is like kind of interesting, which moves it like I think up to being like a, a decent option, but I don't think it's like a the top of the SNS options. It's like it's okay next patch, but VG's up there. Spear and I think Greatsword and IG are like the top two that people are going to really debate between. SNS might need less stamps since you can defensive formation slightly further away from dangers. That's true, but when I think about like a point, like I don't think there is like a playing outside of a clump. I think there is one clump, and you you're kind of forced to be in it no matter what. Uh, so the, with the stam changes, I think it's just hard. Like the the trick with SNS right now is you want to turn your back and not try to take stam damage so you can keep your shield up as much as possible, and that's going to be like even more pronounced next patch. Like you're going to have to play that way. Like, if, if one of these... Do I think IG is, like, a tier better than Greats? Eh, I don't know. I, I feel like IG might be a tier better than Greatsword, but I wouldn't say... Or, or better than... Uh, yeah, IG is a tier better than Greatsword, but I wouldn't say SNS is, like, a, a hard carry role next patch because I think it's more stagnant. I think you, you play in a spot and people play around your aura rather than you go into clumps, specifically because of the aura change. I think it's better for you just to anchor in one spot. People play around you. Uh, when you're playing that kind of style, you inherently have less, like, you carry more on the roll itself, but you have, like, less individual carry potential, I think, if you play more passive for the, the stam changes and you play more sedentary. But, so I would say, like, this is about the spot where SNS is one of the best weapons in the game, but from, like, an individual carry point of view, I don't think it's as good as some other weapons still. Medium Great Axe Greatsword. This is, like, a disruptor-oriented build that is common but not super super common uh next patch great great axe got a few changes that were interesting great sword didn't really great, great sword got nerfs great axe got a little bit more interesting uh do these the reap actually buffs this a little bit whirlwind won't be played with this class most likely and then great axe got the the change where this the what do you call it skyward slash the the secondary that you come down with uh, it has a reduced radius. I don't know if that's even... Is that on here? Uh, yeah, here it is. Like, th this reduced radius is pretty big for a nerf. The Roaring Rupture thing's a nice buff, but it's, like, relatively insignificant. It's just, like, 30% Fortify versus 24% in the in buff duration, which is, like... It's it's good, but Fortify isn't, like, that insane. Like, this is, like, saving you, like, maybe... I don't know. I don't even know if it saves you, like, one more auto, to be honest. It, like, saves you, like, half an auto. It's, it, like, in terms of dying. So I don't think it's, like, that good. I don't think this build's, like, insane, but it's, like, not awful. So probably somewhere around C tier. Uh, medium SNS Greatsword. This is, like, King of Disruption. 
SNS got really, really big buffs. A great sword got minor nerfs. I would say it's somewhere around like an A tier, just because SNS is really strong. Great sword, I don't think is. Well, mm, it's it's probably still S tier to be honest. I only say that because IG has been hard meta, and IG will forever to be hard meta, and it feels like Great Sword is the only thing I can soft counter IG with with the uh, Relentless Rush. Roaring Rapture is more of a PvE buff. Yeah, I don't think it's like that big of a deal, but uh, SNS really, really strong next patch. Aura change is really big. Most people that go for uh, this don't tend to go for Aura, but you have a lot of options. The The recovery thing is like a really, really big deal. It doesn't seem like a real real big deal, but when you play play those like actual perks, it feels very, very different. Reverse stab, I don't think this matters at all. Whirling blade, I think this slightly matters, but I don't think it's like a, a super super OP ability. The only spot where whirling blade is like maybe interesting is if you find a way to like spam it over and over again, but I don't know if it's doing enough damage to get a lot of value off of that. I've heard that the perk for whirling blade Works off of base damage, which means it should be doing a lot of damage if you have a lot of people around you and you're consistently hitting it, and it will not have much of a cooldown. Uh, that being said, I think you'll probably get blown up before it actually tends to get a ton of value, so it's like interesting, but I don't think it's like insane. SNS Greatsword, though, I think is like the first S tier thing, just because SNS is relatively good next patch. Greatsword got minor nerfs, but it is the only weapon that can kind of counter IG, so it still kind of remains as like one of those default, uh, very, very strong kind of disruptor oriented builds that kind of builds metas snx great axe i don't think is as strong as great sword at all i think it's like more of a b tier build like it's not bad but great axe just doesn't do enough compared to great sword from a disruption standpoint it has like really good getting in getting out potential but if you just get caught in ice showers and you get shot like the build kind of falls apart really really quickly and especially in medium where you can't really tank any of the damage uh so that's why i would say it's like generally worse to go that sort of setup Medium SNS Greatsword. I've already got that on this list. Taking that out. Light Greatsword Hatchet. This is a pure nuker disruption oriented build. Greatsword got nerfs for this build. Hatchet got minor buffs, I believe. Let me find Hatchet on here. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This barely matters. This is a really, 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 really big buff. It's probably, it's between S and A. I'd probably lean to A. If, actually, if it's if, it, if this is off carry potential, it's S. But I would I would say general population is A. So it's like kind of a weaker S. The, the hatchet social distancing change is like a really, really big deal. Because uh, you, you can basically just use that when you're less than six meters away. The perk on the hatchet itself reduces that cooldown by 48% if you have it on the hatchet. Which basically means that there's like literally no cooldown with that, and then you could always get out for free. Uh, so that and then it's gonna root people. So it's just like a a very very high impact perk that you could slot, and you'll just get a lot of value off of that, which inherently probably makes some sort of like kind of great sword hatchet oriented setup like pretty good. Uh, medium SNS IG, uh, I think it's pretty good still. I don't think it's as good as some of these. I think it's like it's between like a B and a C tier. Originally it was a lot higher. Because people just use it to zone, but it's just not really doing enough nowadays in terms of like kind of disruption oriented builds. Uh, honestly, is it better than Great Axe? Yeah, I think it's a little bit better than Great Axe. I might switch these two around, but it, it's like it's not bad. But I wouldn't say it's like insane in term in terms of like kind of carrying. It's more of just like a, a soft zoner. Like it, it's fine for what it does. It lives pretty dang well. That's the main good aspect about it. Light IGBB is definitely like one of those high carry things on the current patch. Next patch, do I think IGBB is still carrying? Uh, I believe it is. Let me see if there's any change for Blunderbuss. That there's no change for Blunderbuss. I still think it's high carrying. I don't know if it's A or if it's S. I want to say it's A. Like I, uh, yeah, I would say it's A. Like I think a. A really good light IGBB does very well, but it's usually more like a when light IGBB does very well. It's usually it feels like a, a win more build, like you're doing well because you're winning. Uh, I'd say light IGBB has more impact than medium IGBB, but it's not as insane as melee oriented builds, especially with the the blocking changes that are coming. I think inherently it just kind of gets heavily nerfed from that. 
it's not bad, but I wouldn't say it's like inherently good. Uh, well, no, it's a really good build, but I don't think it's like as OP as it was on this current patch by far. Like on a current patch, this would be S tier. On next patch, it's probably like an A tier build. Skill diff impacts the A or the S tier. Yeah, that's true. Like light greatsword hat. Uh, I guess I should probably put this in S. I put light greatsword hatchet in S because these two are like really high carry potential, but you could also kind of throw like they're kind of between S and like kind of like a B or a C tier depending on like the player that actually plays them. But in terms of like solo carry potential, they're very very good. Medium IGBB is just like a really consistent like good build. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as much carry potential as light IGBB. The nice part about it though is you can kind of dual like more medium oriented setups. You have similar damage. You can really take advantage of shirking and power with this build that you kind of can't take advantage of as much with the light IGBB. So it's still probably like an A tier build, but it's like pretty close. Heavy IGBB, I think it's a meme meme build. It's not really viable. It hasn't been viable for a while. Musket Rapier. Musket got a really, really big buff in terms of the actual loading shots. It feels like very, very consistent. Uh, but it's like more of a, a sedentary thing. Like if you're on the move, I don't think you're going to notice it as much. But it's still like a very, very impactful change. And then Rapier is just like inherently just good. I think it like on the current patch, like Musket's probably like a D tier setup or maybe a C tier. I think it gets a little bit better from the change, but then it also gets a lot worse because of the blocking change. So I'd still say it's around a D tier, mostly because of the blocking. Like if you're going to go against a healer, which is something that Musket normally like is good versus, the healer can drop a Sacred on himself and then just block, and I don't think the Musket can kill them on next patch. But if you have the support of other builds, like if you have like bows in your group maybe, if you have like kind of melees kind of pushing up, I think that's sort of something where Musket actually can get a lot of inherent value because you can kind of finish up targets that are, are lower. Bow Rapier honestly got really big nerfs, uh, but it has it has buffs, but it's like overall I would say it's nerfed from the blocking change. Range of Arrows is the biggest thing. Do I see like Reign of Arrows being good? I think Reign of Arrows can be very annoying on point. I don't know if it's really OP though. This is like more of like a mage bow setup in a sense where you probably want to be spamming that into some sort of one-shot combo. I don't believe Rain Heavy Pen works anymore. I believe Rain Pen works. Uh, that's a lot of damage, but I don't know if it's enough damage for it to be justifiable. It's really, really close to being a lot of, like, justifiable, though. I don't think that's going to be the meta for Bow, though. I think it's still going to be something, like, fairly similar, uh, but not as insane as the current patch. I'd still say it's probably, like, a an A-tier build, but it's not, like, as o OP as it as historically felt, mostly because of the blocking changes. Bow Hatchet. Hatchet got a really, really big buff. Uh, it makes it basically so that it can get away for free. It also sets up your bow. I think this is like inherently about the same level next patch. It was a lot lower before, but uh, the Hatchet change just allows you to play offensive with Hatchet if someone's like really close to you. It allows you to disengage very, very fast. I think disengaging with Hatchet is kind of underrated. The only part where Rapier is like a little bit better is I think Rapier has more pressure than Hatchet like overall, but Hatchet is still like very, very good next patch mostly because of the change to social distancing. So I, I'd say they're about the same tier uh, in terms of carry potential next patch. Heavy Great Axe Warhammer. I think this is actually like very, very underrated next patch because uh, Whirlwind feels very, very, very good. It feels very fluid. I don't think people really ran it before, but you can definitely like get in there and you can get in wherever you want like really, really quickly with that. And you can escape really, really quickly with that. I think it's inherently better than Charge. I think Whirlwind is something that is going to be meta for a point team altogether. So I would say this is like, like probably, and I'd say between, it would be like an A tier build. Like it's somewhere between S and B. I think it's most likely A. I might move Hatchet down one more tier because now I think about it, like Hatchet's more defensive in terms of solo carrying. I think it's a little bit worse. But it ha its survivability is like very very good as well. So it's like in terms of being consistent, Hatch is probably better than Bow. But in terms of carrying, if you're really if you're really or Hatch is a little bit better than Rapier. But in terms of carrying, Rapier is probably a little bit better than Hatchet. Designated single target healer. Uh, to be honest, I'm putting an S because I think EU has found a way to make this masterful. Because you could heal other healers, you could pocket people mid detonate push if you're good with it, and off of that alone, where you can double single target heal a certain target, it just inherently makes it the most skill potential Harry th carry pure build in the game. 
even though it seems like it's the, the lowest. Uh, I think it's like like from a number standpoint, but from a, like an impact standpoint, I don't think any healer can really compete with DST. I think EO has the best healers in the game, uh, and they mostly run DST, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> Beacon, strong. Uh, I don't think it's insane for carrying, but it's like it's a solid build. Like it, It's probably like a, a B-tier build. AoE healer, uh, I think it's needed, but I honestly don't see, like, there's a number difference, but I don't really see, like, an impact from an AoE healer as much from, like, a solo carrying potential. Like, if the number's bigger, it's like, oh, my number's bigger than yours. Like, that's great, but it really depends, like, where the heals are going. Like, the heals are going towards the SNS, it's very good. If the heals are going off point, it's a little bit worse. Like, it's generally, you hit the biggest clump, you get the biggest number, you have more carry potential. But I still feel like when you have the single targets, you can play make a little bit more. You could heal other healers. Uh, you could heal people that are be getting hit while, like, during the detonates. And there's just stuff like that that you can't really carry with as much from an AoE healer perspective. Like, a healer is still really important. But I don't think it's, like, a super solo carry heavy role. I think it's very army dependent. And, like, if you're in a losing war with an AoE healer, you won't really feel the difference. Like, you might get bigger numbers, but, like, you're not going to, like, feel, like, an overall, like, giant impact from, like, a much better AoE healer than a much worse AoE healer, in my opinion. I think the STs are just a little bit more impactful. Orb, uh, Orb is still pretty bad. It's worse than Beacon. Uh, I think it's probably D tier off of that, because if you want to go Orb healer, like, Beacon's better. Uh, and then, and then, and if, also, if you want to go orb healer, then like you might as well just go AOE. I don't think you need a big mix of orbs and beacons just because it doesn't do as much now since it's fortify and the fortify just overall got nerfed. If the fortify got moved from like a ten percent to a twenty percent, I think orb would be like a, a B tier build. But until that buff happens, I still think it's like not a very very strong build. Fire staff. I don't believe fire staff got. Well, actually, Firestaff did get, like, major changes, but it's, like, very, very weird. Uh, so, Firestaff got damaged nerfs, but the Invig bug got fixed. Which inherently means that for Pillar of Fire, you're about net neutral. But for everything else, your damage just got buffed. That's, like, an ability. So, Fireball got buffed. Uh, Burnout got buffed for the people that go for Burnout Detonate plays, which is, are weirdly common. Uh, and then Incinerate obviously got, like, a really big buff, but I don't think people are really going to run Incinerate. I want to say it's about where it was, and it's, like, very high carry potential, but it's not as high carry potential as, like, some of these other builds that are on top of this list. Light Fire Staff Rapier, I don't think Rapier's as good as Ice Gauntlet. Uh, it's a, maybe a little bit better for holding space, but if you get hit once, you're just kind of fucked, to be honest, and you, you don't want to be trading blows, and at that point, you're using Rapier defensively. At that point, is Rapier really better than Ice Gauntlet? I don't really think so. I'd say it's like kind of a C tier. I don't think it's even B. I think Rapier just makes it a lot worse. But it is like a decent OPR oriented build. I just don't think from a war format perspective, Rapier really does anything with Fire Staff. Fire Staff BB, good damage. Fire Staff got the damage buff. BB is net neutral. Uh, I'd say it's about the same spot as Rapier. Maybe a little bit worse, to be honest. Uh, it, it's like it's like a it's a greedy build. Like you can carry with this on a, depending on the server, but for most servers, you'll just get called out because you're playing fire stop BB. People will try to zerg you down because you basically have no escape. Uh, and I think that inherently puts you at a pretty big disadvantage. It would be interesting if someone takes advantage of the blast shot with this to actually like escape, but I don't think anyone's gonna really try. That. I think it's kind of a meme. So I'd probably say it's more of like a C tier oriented build. Like it's it's okay, but it's not great. Musket Bow is very greedy, but it can do a lot of things pretty well. The Musket buffs kind of make it so that this build could be really useful for holding space in certain situations, and if it's like well-protected, I think you can carry pretty well with this. That being said, I think Bow Rapier is like generally a little bit better, but it's like a pretty solid build. Light, Great Sword, Great Axe, kind of a legacy build. Very good at disrupting at the right times, potentially. It gets a decent amount of big buffs with the with the or not a decent amount. It, get, it got the reap change for for great axe, which reap doing more damage matters a little bit. Uh, great sword got nerfed. I think that makes it about net neutral. I think it's generally worse than other 
light builds. I think it's a lot better to go with Hatchet for sure. I'd say it's like a, a C tier build. Honestly, maybe even a D tier build now. Uh, the, the problem you have with this is like you can get in very far. Uh, you have like a lot of movement, but I don't think you actually secure kills as well with this. Uh, it feels like a very kind of get on people and then like charge halfway across the map after like three light rolls and get out kind of thing. And it's like, it's annoying, but you can't run as low con as you can with great sword hatchet. So you just naturally can't carry as hard, if that makes sense. Also like 300, like you, you have a weird spot with great axe where you, you need to go like, I guess Great Axe doesn't even do that much damage for this. It's more of like a disruption oriented setup. If you're playing it for the damage of the Great Sword, you probably have like 150 con to 200 con. Uh, I, I don't think it's that good. I think it's like okay, but I, I don't think it's as nearly as good as it once was. Medium IG VG. VG's just been getting progressively worse, to be honest, but there are a little bit of interesting changes here. The tether change. I think it's significant. I don't think it's going to be meta for IGVG, though. I think it's something that's going to be tried with BB a lot. It's going to be tried with, like, kind of weird, quirky builds. Like, I think people will try SNS VG, and then they'll put Tether on there and be like, huh, I could, I could Tether this one dude to me, and if he comes anywhere near the point, he's just slow, so he's going to try to run away from me or wait for that Tether to expire or something, like, stupid like that. But it doesn't really do that much. Uh, the only thing you get from Tether is you get the Empower, you get the Weaken, and you get the Slow. If you switch to your other weapon, which is good for some builds, like BB has really low in power, so it could be good for BB. Do I think it's good for VG and IG? Like, you're not really playing to do damage. I think it's something that inherently a lot of people are actually going to miss throwing it out, uh, just because it's like naturally hard to. People could dodge it, it could be eaten by mail. It's like kind of inconsistent, but at certain times it can be good. But there's also not really something you want to cut, right? Like, you don't want to cut Orb, you don't want to cut Scream, you don't want to cut Oblivion. So I don't think it really has a spot for this particular build. IGVG, like on the current patch, very, very needed. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like, well, you know, I'm going to backtrack on this, actually. I think IGVG is relatively high skill cap next patch, only because SNS is hard meta, and IGVG can bug SNS, and if they do that at the right times, the, the actual SNS aura effectively does nothing, which inherently can make and the ig is really good for setting up detonates so this is going to be controversial but i think i'm going to put it in s tier basically off the bug that it can basically nullify sns value if you time your abilities right and vg or sorry and ig is really 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 good with detonates uh but i don't think it it's not like a from a, like an individual solo carry perspective no but from a game sense perspective I think good IGVGs like make a really, really big difference in the war. I think it's a little bit more impactful than SNS at the highest level because IGVG can counter SNS, but SNS can't really counter IGVG. But SNS is just generally better. But like if from like an individual carry perspective, IGVG I think can carry a little bit harder if you time stuff right. But that being said, most IGVGs aren't playing near point. So I don't think they're going to get the value from bugging SNS, which inherently would bump it down a tier. And to be honest, I think SNS probably has indiv individually a little bit more solo carry potential than some of these builds. Just because the aura change is such a big deal. Even though it's like the stam's going to be worse. Like if you don't if you don't deal with the SNS, the SNS is just going to passively carry. It could easily be like an EU meta where people are slotting two SNSs. So I might switch those where IGVG... It's very, very good for carrying because it can counter SNS, but SNS by default inherently is just a little bit more value than IGVG. So it, it really kind of depends on the matchup, but uh, both these weapons are like relatively close. But that's That might be a little bit controversial. We'll look back at that towards the end. Light Great Axe Warhammer, uh, kind of a legacy build, not really used anymore for pretty good reasons. Uh, you, you just die with this build versus BB, like, instantly, because all your things are, like, really high. And you have to, it, you spend a long time in animations committing to things with this kind of setup, and everything that you do is, like, super, super telegraphed, which inherently I don't think makes it very, very good. It's, it's weirdly good versus, like, healers, though, so I might bump it up to D because of the new ult. Because if you, if you combo people with being slowed in an ult, and then you do that into a grab that pulls people... And you can like kind of chain things together and you can probably get some point wipes, but I think it's like very, very sketchy. There's also some weird bugs with Warhammer where you can basically almost one tap people because Wrecking Ball can 
hit twice. I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but I know it can be done. So I think that inherently bumps it up a tier, but it's still not a very good build. Medium Spear SNS got a lot of buffs. Uh, it's between A and S. It got Spear, for reference, got the Cyclone change. So this is basically, I'm thinking of Farmer John when I'm thinking about rating this. Farmer John's build just got like a really, really big buff with the Cyclone change. The idea is you sweep the healer, you Cyclone the healer, so they have 50% slow. So if they use dodge to try to get away, they're just not going to go anywhere. Uh, if I look up New World Skill Builder, I'm pretty sure this slow lasts like a decently long two. It kind of depends how long it lasts to a degree. It's a it's a three second slow. That's that's a pretty good duration for when you're pressuring healers, but it's not insane. But it is a fifty percent slow. Fifty percent slow is like very 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 good. I want to say it is. S and basically tied with Greatsword in terms of carry potential next patch. Like both these are very good, but you have to know how to play the spear. If you don't play the spear right, like it could very easily fall down. But if you know how to, like I think it can be very, very good. IGVG in terms of light, I think is just inherently bad. Uh like if medium is here, light is probably one of these two. It's probably C tier or D tier. Uh, the thing that I'm thinking about is if you're light and you get hit and you can't inherently get out now. You can't you can't you keep the slow up with crits? You can, but you have to be keep hitting the same target, so yeah, so I guess that duration does get increased. I, I still put an S tier out of I don't think it could be any better than that really. It's just very, very good. I've been flaming our assassin for wanting to go medium greatsword SNS. It's actually a pretty good build, uh, but it's more of a disruptor. Uh, it, it's just the, the great sword's really good for getting out and doing damage, and the SNS is very good overall. Light IGVG, I think, is somewhere between C and D. I'm probably going to lean to D, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't think it inherently gets much value. Clap Healer, is it dead? It has a 25 meter range. It has, has a little bit of a boost from other things, but has a 25 meter range. I don't think it's dead. I think it's about as skillful as AoE. The The main thing that carries clap here right now is the clap for the cleanse perk. It prioritizes roots first, which can inherently basically save your team in clump fight situations along with DST. Like both these are very, very strong in terms of like solo carry potential at certain times. But it is a lot worse with the range change. Like this build before, I think was like one of the better healer builds. Uh, the range change makes it significantly worse. I still think I'm probably gonna put it in B and then bump Beacon up a tier, and just have it like that. So AOE is like a little bit worse than that. Orb is a little bit worse. Clap Beacon, uh, and didn't DST. I think it's actually like pretty close. Do you actually need to hit the same target to extend the cooldown? To wording this fade on a perk. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. Which is why it's like Spear is really good in PvE, but it's not as good in PvP. Because in PvP, you tend not to hit the same person. I don't typically uh, take the exacerbating like crits like all the time for, for Spear if I don't have to. It's just like a really inconsistent perk. Because you have to hit people that you've already hit before. Which you can do, but it's not like as common as like you would kind of hope. Uh, that being said, it is like it's still kind of mandatory, I think, for the most part. But it's like it's not super consistent. When it works, it's really, really good. It's just you don't get that out of it for the most part. Medium fire stuff, IG. <laughs> fire stuff got got the funny buff. It has what do you call it? It has incinerate now, and that could be used with medium, I think. But I don't think you really want to. The idea behind I think medium fire staff is just worse than medium BB though, because if you're playing medium fire staff, you're playing the, like tech against people that are on top of you. But as fire staff, you usually want to range those people. The only spot where I could see medium maybe being a little bit better if you're, if you're using flamethrower. I don't think flamethrower with fire staff is like really it though. Like it's okay. Uh, I need to add heavy fire staff IG in here too. I forgot about that one. Uh, but I think it's like it's an okay build. I don't think it's inherently like awful. I just don't think it's inherently like kind of great either. I'd probably put it along the same line of Fire Staff BB. Like, I feel like that's pretty appropriate. Uh, but I don't think it's as good as the light Fire Staff builds. 
the heavy one, I think, has interesting carry potential in the sense that you can stack Smolder, but that entire build kind of, well, no, it kind of went net neutral. It didn't get buffed, didn't really get nerfed, but you don't really, like, want to slot this in a point team. Like, I don't feel like anyone, like, really wants to, but I don't think it's terrible. Incinerate did get a pretty big buff, so maybe it's, like, a little bit better. I think it's, like, this is kind of a slept-on build. I'd say it's between B and C tier, to be honest, uh, but it's not very commonly ran. It's, like, I'll be nice to it and put it in B, but it very easily could be high C tier. Heavy IGVG, uh, I think it can carry a little bit worse than medium IGVG, but it's still needed on point, and they're basically the same tier in terms of carry potential. Heavy IGVG is also closer to SNS usually, so you have more, you have the potential to bug the SNS a little bit better. So I think it's basically the same tier. I don't think there's much of a difference there. Medium Great Axe Warhammer, that's a very easy S. I don't think that really needs much explanation. It's just it's such a big melee diff between the top melee and like pretty good melee, and that is the, the meta build, and I think will be the meta build uh, basically for the entirety of the rest of the game. Medium Spear, Great Sword. Didn't I already... No, I did I did it with SNS. Oh, actually, I might move this down to, and then move this one up. I was thinking of the Great Sword when I was thinking of Farmer John. He, he, Farmer John runs Great Sword because he can get out better than he can with the SNS. Uh, also, the Calamity Counter is weirdly good. It doesn't really make sense for most builds, but I think for this build in particular, it's like weirdly good because people get annoyed by you. They look at you and then you just claim the counter and they, you, they can't really do anything for five seconds. So I'm going to switch those two. Medium BBVG, I think, got buffs, but I don't think is nearly as good. Like before, this was like a D tier build uh, with the change to tether. I think it moves up to C tier or B tier. I will be nice to it and say B tier, but it's like pretty close. Uh, light BBVG I think is worse than it weirdly because you have to be kind of close range, and I think people are would just inherently hit you if you're on light BBVG. <laughs> like you, you'd probably fall over because they're like, hey, this guy's on light BBVG. Literally can be two tap, so you're probably just gonna get shot a lot. Uh, light fire staff VG, I think this plays too close for this build to really get value. Medium fire staff VG I think is okay. Uh. Is it C tier worthy? I don't think so, because Fire Staff already has like very high empower built into the kit. I don't think you really need it. Like light BBVG, you have the potential to carry, but medium, I don't think you really do as much. SNS VG, uh, this is just kind of an annoying build, but I don't think it inherently makes SNS too much better. I think if people see you with this, they're just going to inherently go after you. It's like a very, very greedy build. I'd probably put it in D tier. Like it's okay, but it's not fantastic. Did I forget any builds on this? Anyone see a build on here that I forgot? BBVG medium is hardest carry in the game. It it could carry very hard if you're uncontested. I'll give you that. But if it's not, like if you contest it, it like falls over very, very fast now. But I think it is a lot higher carry potential than light BBVG. Like off potential, I want to put this in A tier. But historically, BBVG has never been meta, even when it was, like, the most OP. And same with heavy BBVG, when it was, like, meta, like, only, like, two or three people played it. Because it's just, like, inherently harder to play. Uh, but it does have the potential to, like, hard, hard carry. I just I just still don't think it's, like, at, in general, as good as some of the other builds on here. It's, like, the, like the, the concept of where BBVG could be good is the same concept of maybe, like, a, a like a healer with VG can be good. Like, it, it's just not meta here, like, anymore. Like, if I did, like, a, a light heal, like, AoE, or if I do AoE healer with VG, like, it would it'd be an F tier build still. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, you just can't live. And if you're, like, one of those guys that can live, then you're, you're not playing against, like, the, the great sword builds. Because if you play against those guys, like, you're just going to get farmed. It's, like, literally free kills, so it doesn't really work. I think this is, like, fairly accurate. Or, or yeah, Great Axe Hatchet. Like, this used to be used a lot. Let me do GA Patch It. And then... This is kind of a medium or a light build. The medium, I think it's like, it's okay next patch, but it's not nearly as good as the other other builds in that class. And then in light, uh, I think it's honestly a little bit better in light than it is in medium. I don't think it's bad. Because Hatchet got like some really, really big buffs. 
and Warhammer stuns are like really good, but I feel like it's like kind of an underrated like kill squad thing. I don't think it's as good as the other ones though, but it's like it's definitely underrated with the the hatchet changes next patch. Like you can make the same argument for great sword, and I think great sword's better, but like hatchet's like okay. Light SNS hatchet. Yep, I forgot that. That's honestly very high carry potential. That's kind of an S tier build next patch. Like it was it was really good and then it was not very good and then it's probably really good again. Yeah, I kinda of forgot about that one. Yeah, that's a good one. The only weird thing about this is like you basically Well, you have to up your con with it, right? Like I think you go one fifty con with this, maybe two no, you probably go one fifty. And then you go 200 strength, 150 dex, yeah. And then you, at that point, you're like, catch it main hand. It's kind of weird. I think it's good, though. I, I don't know if it's S tier. That feels a little, that sounds a little awkward to me. I, I might want to move it down to A. Honestly, I might move light IGVG down to, to F. I don't think it's very good. I think that's roughly accurate, though. Medium Greatsword Hatchet? I did forget Medium Greatsword Hatchet. That's a big one. And that got actually pretty big buffs at the Hatchet side. It's a lot better than it used to be. I, I want to fit this in A, to be honest. Uh, could I... Does this work? That does work. I'd probably say it's an A-tier build. It can harass, and it can live, like, really, really well next patch with the change. Like, this is all off of social distancing. Social distancing? I think this is, like, a really, really, really big change. Like, this, this thing was really annoying, and then removing the cooldown just makes it, like, inherently, like, hatch it so much better. Or removing the cooldown. Removing the like the, the distance requirement. Because that means you could be like in a fight versus someone, and then you just hit them with this like root that lasts for a second, gives you like haste and a bunch of other random buffs if I pull it up. Did I get rid of my thing? I got rid of my skill builder. Uh but nah, social distancing, so it gives you haste. It gives them gives you it puts a root on them. So the six meter away thing got changed, right? So it's like it's a guaranteed one second root, so you can like totally mess people up with that. Uh, and it's going to slow. So, like, tell me that's not, like, a very high carry potential thing on the PTR. Like, that seems, like, very, very strong to me. If I go back to Hatchet, like, this, like, that is very, very strong. <laughs> a one-second root, like, that's, that's, uh, like, on par with VG, but I think it's inherently better on this build, because not as many people run freedom off a of point. Like, healers, they want to go Ellie Aversion, they want to go... Uh, refreshing, right? And you want to go Rezil, because you have to go Rezil. So the root's just inherently going to last longer, so it's just inherently like very good from a, a VG perspective. Is it worth mentioning the, the offhands for, for life staff, IG and Rapier mainly? I thought about it, but I honestly think that you can argue for, for Rapier and for, for IG for any role. And there, I think... My my hot take was would be that rapier and IG are basically the same for any healer build, but a lot of healers prefer the rapier, which is fine. But if you play like very group oriented and you have DSTs healing each other, I think that IG is better. But in general, rapier is easier to play around. But with like a very very high skill cap like healer comp, like the ones that you run, I think that IG definitely can work. But in NA, I would not expect IG to work at all because I don't think our healers are good enough to to get away with it, and they don't chain heal each other at all. Like EU, they they die so much less to to dex pressure than the the NA healers think it's crazy, but I don't like how far out this goes. Is there a build I can move down? <laughs> uh, would this be an S tier with the whirlwind change? What was the whirlwind change again? I don't think it is. Oh, you can cancel out of it, too. I forgot about that. And you get into it really fast. And you could go really far. Uh, I, I don't think it's S tier, but I think it's really close.
Is heavy SNS greatsword really A tier? I don't know. It's kind of like close to VG to be honest. Like I, th I think this is a B tier build. I think there's a gap between this and IG. I think they're very close though. Like greatsword can carry with the pulls, but the problem is that so many people have grit on point that it like never does anything. And IG I think just has more carry potential with the you can live longer. Uh, showering behind people is really good. As Mimi as it is, the the wind chill thing got buffed on the PTR because they have grit, so Lend God's build got got a big buff. Yeah, that's that looks okay. And then I can hide this or something like that. Like a lot of A and B's on here, which is probably a good thing. Like I definitely could fit more C D F tier builds, but I, those builds people don't usually care about as much, so I think this is about right. Clop, even though it's nerfed, I still say it's like okay, because for like LOS in particular, you can't really beat Clop. It's not nearly as good for Kill Squad, that's the big thing though. 